It's interesting to note that least squares is not dependent on just talking about vectors in Rn. For example, if our let V be any vector space, a complete normed vector space over some field F, so for example F doesn't have to be the real numbers, it could be the complex numbers. And I'm going to assume it's a complete no a Hilbert space, a complete norm vector space over a field. Then the norm and the projection and all the other things are exactly the same as in vector spaces. So as an example that's actually kind of useful is if our, our data, y, is a continuous function from 0, 1 to r. And this might happen, for example, in data analysis where your observed response is a continuously recorded function. Now, of course, we can't exactly continuously record anything. It has to be discretized at some level. But often it's mathematically convenient to think of the data as being continuous. For example, if you're recording an accelerometer or some sort of wearable computing device, it's probably preferable to think of that as a continuous signal rather than the discretized signal because the, the granularity of the recording is so fine that the, uh, acknowledging the discreteness isn't helpful. So imagine if our, if, if our vector that we're interested in is a function from 0, 1 to r. And so let's consider the space of square integral functions on 0, 1, L2 of 0, 1. So the norm in that space is the, the inner product in that space is the inner product of two functions f and g is just the integral from 0 to 1 of f times g. And if the field is, uh, here I'm assuming the field is real. If it was complex, then we would have a complex conjugate over one of them. But let's stick within the real field right now. Let's let j be an identity function, a multiplicative identity function and consider minimizing the norm of our data y minus j times beta naught where beta naught is an element of the field squared. Let's let y bar just be the integral of our y function from 0 to 1. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract and add y bar times this unit function j. I'm going to, because the norm satisfies in the inner product satisfies all the standard properties that it does in our vector space, our standard real valued vector space, I have y minus y bar times j squared minus twice this inner product right here plus y bar j minus j beta naughts quantity squared. I can work with this inner product and this component right here has y bar j minus j beta naught. y bar and beta naught are both uh, uh, scalars and so I can pull them out and I get inner product y minus y bar j times j which is now that times inner product of y and j minus y bar is a scalar so pulling y bar out and the inner product of j with itself. The inner product of j with itself because it's this, this identity function is simply 1 and so it's y bar minus the inner product of y and j. But we defined y, y bar up here as exactly the inner product of y and j so that term, whole term, is 0. Then again if we throw out this term here because it's squared to be positive we get only smaller. So again, just exactly like we argued before, the y bar j function is the unique minimizer of the least squares criteria. So if you have a function, if you have a function from 0, 1 to r is your observed data point, and you want to best approximate it as a horizontal function over that range, your best approximation is going to be the integral of your observed function. And this is kind of useful. It's, it's a, just a direct extension of a vector approximation, the average being the best approximation, to now a functional approximation. Things like this form the basis of a branch of statistics 
called functional data analysis. Let's extend this. Now let's consider centering y as y tilde, which is y minus y bar times this j function, the constant function. Now let's find the best approximation of the form beta 1 x tilde, where x tilde is a known function from 0, 1 to r in our space L2, such that its integral x tilde is 0. So the inner product of x tilde with j is 0. So my claim is that my beta 1 hat, the best approximation to y of this form, is going to take exactly the form of our regression to the origin estimate, the inner product of the x and the y divided by the inner product of x with itself. And here I'm going to define my predicted function as my beta hat times this x tilde function. Well let's go through it and the argument is, is identical to that used when we did regression through the origin. We have y minus beta 1x quantity squared. We're going to add and subtract, we're going to subtract and add that function. So we've just added 0 which does nothing. We're going to expand out this inner product and we get these three terms. And again as we've argued in multiple instances going through these sorts of arguments in the class, if this term is 0 then beta hat will be the maximum. So let's assume beta hat is this value right here and see demonstrate that that term is 0. So here I have the main part of that term whereas if it's 0 oh, here, here I have the whole thing. I've expanded it out. If this term which is equal to that is 0 then we'll have shown that beta 1 hat is exactly the minimizer of the least squares criteria. Well if I expand this function out I get beta 1 hat times the inner product of y and x minus beta 1 hat squared times the inner product of x with itself and everything has it should have a tilde over it. Um, beta 1 times the inner product of y and x plus beta 1 hat times beta 1 times the inner product of x with itself. Remember beta 1 hat is inner product y and x divided by the inner product of x with itself. So this term is the inner product of y and x squared divided by the inner product of x with itself. This quantity right here you can just show is exactly the same thing right here. And so these two cancel out. And then beta 1 times y inner product of y and x is I'm not going to do anything with that so let me just rewrite it right here. And then beta 1 hat if I plug this, if I plug its formula in there then I get beta 1 times the inner product of y and x. Again, negative sign here, positive sign here. They both cancel out and they get 0. So I know this is kind of complicated when you're watching it as a video. Go through the lecture notes and hopefully you'll see it. But the broader point is that there was nothing in particular about the specific real valued, n-dimensional real valued vector spaces that we looked at. Looked at any Hilbert space is going to have the same sort of least squares rules that we have here because the arguments carry through kind of you know using exactly the same form of the proof as we did previously. So if we were to extend this logic we just did kind of the equivalent of regression mean only regression and then we did the equivalent of regression through the origin then exactly through the same logic as before the best approximation of the form beta naught times j plus beta 1 times x, the best approximation of y of that form is going to have 
a beta naught hat that looks like y bar minus beta one hat x bar and our beta one hat is going to be the inner product of the centered y and the centered x over the inner product of the centered x with itself. And this is exactly what we found when we did the same derivation but just assumed that we had vectors, real valued vectors, instead of arbitrary elements from a Hilbert space. But we could just define this as the function or Hilbert space correlation between y and x times the functional or Hilbert space standard deviation of y divided by by the Hilbert space standard deviation of x. So all of it carries through. It gives you sort of an obvious way to define the relevant statistical quantities in these more complex spaces.